In this video, we are talking about uh, synchronous and asynchronous modulation and therefore demodulation. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about synchronous because that's what we've been doing so far in the previous uh, videos. And then we'll contrast the synchronous versus the asynchronous. <clears throat> Uh, basically, the word synchronous means that they both both of the um, signals we are using for modulation and demodulation are synced up. That there's no phase shift between them. Uh, as you might guess, that's pretty. You know, sometimes that's difficult. It requires extra work to make sure the signals are synced up. It is possible, and we do it, but it's extra work to make that happen. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the synchronous first before we go look at the asynchronous situation. So we've got um, we've got this signal here. Oops, we've got this um, <coughs> example here uh, with the case of a synchronous. I went too far. Uh, we've got our this x of t is our signal bearing signal. Uh, so that's the one that is bearing the information. So we want to modulate it. We modulate it at omega c. Before I go too far, it's always very important to make sure that the omega m, the maximum frequency of x of t, or the frequency of x of t, is significantly smaller than uh, omega c. At least an order of 10 or 100 would be great. So if I'm so the, the farther the part they are, the better the work is going to be. <clears throat> For obvious reason, as you know, when we convolute this thing, it's going to create shadow. The farther those shadows are, the easier it is to recover the original signal. Okay, <clears throat> so x of t goes, gets a cosine. And if you remember what that will do, what that will do basically, will, if x of t was sitting right here at 0, x of t now will be sitting... Uh, somewhere at the omega c and omega c minus on the frequency domain. So that's all that does. And we've talked about that in the previous videos. Uh, if for if you have issues with that, I would highly encourage you to go back and watch some of the Fourier transform and sampling and other things to get a sense of why that is happening. Okay. Now that signal is transmitted. So y of t is the transmitted signal. The signal is being carried by the carrier, which is cosine of omega c, or modulated signal. And then that uh, arrives at the receiving end. This is the receiving end of your, uh, this was your transmitter. This is your receiver. You will have an antenna of some sort. And this antenna receives it. And then notice that what we're doing, we're once again kind of multiplying with the carrier, almost what we did over there earlier. And that will give us omega, uh, that will give us wt. And wt basically is going to be y of t times cosine of omega ct. Now, if you write it in terms of x of t, replacing y of t with x of t times cosine, we're going to get this. Now, we know this, <coughs> this relationship of a cosine of a times cosine of b is that, in this case, you can write cosine squared as cosine of omega ct times cosine of omega ct. And if you plug it in here, you'll end up with this equation. So if I, if I were to recover x of t from wt, all I have to do is basically get rid of this piece and then multiply this by 2. Well, that's relatively easy. So if I uh, do a um, low-pass filter such that my cutoff frequency for my low-pass filter is smaller than omega c. And remember, we said omega c should be much larger than omega m, the signal maximum. So if I put a if I put my cutoff frequency right in the middle here, it's going to get rid of the high frequency and it's going to keep the low frequency. My, and if I make the gain for my filter too, I'll get the same signal back, which is exactly what we're demonstrating here. So this is really nice. So you take your signal multiplied by cosine of omega ct that gets modulated to whatever frequency you want to transmit. On the other side, they do exactly the same thing to recover it. The only issue here is that you got to make sure that the receiving end has the same cosine of omega ct as you do starting exactly at the same time. They cannot have a phase uh, phase difference, otherwise you're not synchronous. So now let's, but more realistically is really, you know, you got to do some extra work to make that happen. So what, what another option that's available to us is asynchronous. Asynchronous, if you look at it, it's almost identical to what we talked about before. 
The only difference is when X sub T comes in, yes, it gets multiplied by cosine of omega CT, but it's got a little phase difference. It's got the modulation carrier, modulate carrier theta. Then on the receiving end, Y of T comes in, it still gets multiplied by cosine of omega CT, but since the two cosine, the carriers are not synchronous, they're in different part of the city or part of the world, what's gonna happen is that that's gonna have a different theta. So that, that basically ends up, if I can show you the equation, what ends up will have a phase difference. The process we use is more or less the same, but there are some interesting things that happen that we have to watch to make sure we don't get, um, you know, distortion in our signal. So let's let's talk a little bit about those things. So um, so basically, what we are doing, we got a carrier signal on the modulation side, which is this. This is our transmitted signal. This is our receiving. Uh, this is our original signal get modulated and then sent to the other side, it gets multiplied by the demodulation carrier frequency, and you'll end up with this. Once again, we apply the cosine of A times cosine of B thing, trig function, and we're gonna get something that looks like this, okay? Now, now this is kind of interesting. If you look at this signal, it will look something like this. This, this These f high frequency signal in the middle are the carrier frequency. What this is, what those two bold lines on the top and the bottom are, are the amplitude of your signal. The, this is really your X of T that I'm showing. Now, <clears throat> in order for this to work, we have to make sure X of T we are transmitting is positive and make sure the carrier frequency, of course, is much higher. Because we want to, when we filter it, we would like to be able to get rid of the high frequency stuff and only keep the low frequency stuff. Now, what happens if that is not true? All you have to do, basically, you add a constant to it that basically if, if x is not x is over 0 and 1, we just push the x up before we trans, uh, uh, <coughs> when we modulate it, before we transmit it. So we push it up to make sure that x of t is positive, okay? We actually have a set of formulas we use uh, just to make sure we remember that. We have this, this indicator we call the modulation index M, which is simply K over A. So let's take a look at what K. K is basically your X of T peak to peak. So what is the peak to peak? What's the highest value it takes out? What's the lowest value it takes out? And A basically is the distance from the lowest value to the center, to zero. So if you do that in time domain, then the ratio is called modulation index. And typically, this is represented as a percent. So modulation index is 50% or 80%. What that basically tells us is that we won't have a chance that the each this upper one is a signal, our signal, and the lower one is the negative of our signal. But if they two, if like this top part here, let me use a different color pen for a moment here. So if like this piece ever was so a was really small and k was really big you would have these guys interfere with each other so when you recover it you're not going to get the right signal so as long as you make sure as long as you make sure that your modulation index is less than one which means uh, a is much larger than k then you're in good shape and it, once again if a is not small if your a is not big enough just make sure you add more voltage to it that's a simpler one that's uh, asynchronous, of course, is a little cheaper to build, easier to build, and that's why most of us use that, okay? That kind of brings us to the end of comparing asynchronous versus synchronous, and when we're talking about basically is, is the carrier used to modulate and the carrier used to demodulate it, are they synchronized such that they have no phase difference, or are they asynchronous where they have a phase difference? That brings us to the end of this video.